Okay, so let's get started. Um, thank you for joining. This is Exploratory Online Seminar number 79. Uh, this time I like to cover create and visualize logical data with conditions. Um, before getting into, like, let me introduce myself. My name is Khan Nishida. Um, <clears throat> um, a CEO and co-founder at Exploratory. And we started Exploratory 2016 spring, so it's been, uh, uh, it's almost like a six years now. Um, prior to starting Exploratory, I used to be working at uh, Oracle um, and building various um, data science related products. And since I um, started Exploratory, uh, we've been ba basically building a tool called Exploratory to make uh, more accessible for the data science and also uh, providing this type of the seminar and the training to share our knowledge and skills. Our vision is data informed decision making is to, is essential to make the world better. So therefore, uh, what we can do is we uh, we can um, democratize data science by providing the tools and education. And when we say the data science, uh, we typically think this kind of in a workflow way. So that you start with the business questions and access the data and transform and clean the data we call data wrangling, and then visualize the data and analyze the data. And then once you find the insights that it's useful to answer the questions, then you want to communicate with other folks like chief mates or your managers or customers and so on. So these are the um, essential components for the data science workflow. And we pro build the exploratory as a modern and a simple UI to make these tasks easier and more effective. Okay, that's it about the exploratory and myself. Um, so let's get into the seminar itself. So exploratory online seminar number 79. Uh, this is a create and visualize logical data with conditions. Uh, I like to cover all these topics. And so let's start with the calculate with condition inside chart. Okay, so to do, I'm going to just uh, get into the demo um, and then we'll see from there. So um, when you have the data like this, this is the H, uh, HR data or employee data. So when I go to the uh, table view, basically you can see the data uh, line by line and each row represent um, each employee. And then we have like a bunch of uh, uh, employee attributes such as um, you know, age or uh, job role and the monthly income and so on. Okay, so uh, when I go to, um, <clears throat> so, so let's say here uh, we want to visualize uh, to see like, you know, who are the employees and what type of the job roles they have. And so like, I can go quickly to the chart view and then create the bar chart and then see uh, the by the, let's say like a job role or something like this. And I'm gonna sort it by clicking the check uh, box next to the sort by. And then right now, like what we are looking at is that the length of the bar represent the number of rows, which means number of employee because each row is employee. Okay, so at this point though, uh, I wanna switch to like, what are the average, um, let's say the salary. So I can switch to uh, monthly income in this case, and then like, I can change that to mean uh, to show the average um, income for each job role. And at this point, you ask, uh, let's say, you know, like, I want to see the people who are, let's say, uh, you know, older than 40 years old. And what is the average salary of those particular group in each uh, job role? And in that case right now, I mean, there, there's one way to do is just use the filter and then the filter the data itself to just keep only the employee whose age is greater than 40 years old. Or you can actually use something called conditional uh, agri uh, summarized functions. Um, maybe you are, you might be familiar with as the sum if because there's such function in Excel and basically the same thing. So basically what it is, is like you can create the conditions and then like apply those sum or mean or that type of the summarized function on top of the filter data with the condition. So what it, what it is, is um, let's say I'm gonna keep it as uh, this one, as like, this is like basically uh, for the manager's average 
income, right? I'm going to create it sort of like a second Y axis. We call it Y2 axis. So I'm going to assign the select monthly income. And if I change that to mean, and I'm going to just change this bar chart type to side by side so that I can see uh, these two Y1 measures side by side. And at this point, obviously, like we have the exact same values, but I want these orange values to, orange bars to represent those employee whose orders are 40 years old. Okay. So to do, I'm going to switch to a different function called like mean if, like conditional mean. If I select it, I get this like a condition filter. This is a dialogue exact the same as the dialogue used for filter dialogue. Because essentially what you do when you do the filter is creating uh, the condition. So here's the same as well. So I'm going to create a condition like age column and then greater than let's say uh, 40 years old, okay? And if I click run button, what's gonna happen is now the condition is created for the second Y axis. And what we are looking at this month as a monthly mean, mean monthly income is only for those whose age are greater than 40 years old. So in this case, most of the, uh, actually all of the job roles shows the monthly income for those older folks have higher values compared to the entire uh, uh, population or the employees. Okay, so you can do something like this uh, in a bar chart and also you can do similar thing with the pivot table, summarize table and all other uh, chart type as well. Okay, so that's one. And another thing is maybe uh, I'm gonna just uh, duplicate these charts quickly. And then I'm gonna uh, remove this um, uh, second Y axis. So go back to so job role by uh, number of rows uh, or number of employee by job role, this chart view. And then now here, like I want to know how many of those, how many are out of this, let's say 326 employees, how many of um, the, those are greater than, I mean, whose age are greater than 40 years old. So basically what I want to do is kind of separate, you know, into two groups. One is less than 40 years old and the other one is greater than 40 years old. So I can do it assigning the age here and then that by default, what it happened is because age is numerical values. So it automatically categorize it. So when you look at here, it's like from 18 years old to 16 years old and a category, I mean, uh, <clears throat> grouped by, right, by creating five gr uh, different groups. And then each group has exact the same sort of like widths. Um, let's say from 18 to 26.40, which means basically like 8.40, uh, eight years, 8.4 years old length, so like, or width, right? And the same thing that basically each section or each group has the exact same um, sort of like a width. But this time, that's not what we're looking for. We just, we wanted to see what is that sort of um, uh, ratio of the people who are greater than 40 years old. So I'm gonna click on this green text to open this color uh, setting dialog. And then under here, there's a grouping type. This equal width is the default, but I'm gonna to switch to logical condition. And when you select the logical condition, then I can create a condition here. And this is the same condition dialogue that we saw um, previously. So now like let's say like I wanna set like a greater than uh, equal, and then I'm gonna type 40 and I click okay. And what happened is whoever or any rows that meet this criteria or the condition becomes true, otherwise uh, gray. I can change the color, but I, I'm gonna keep it for now and then click on apply button. And then now it's, this is like a side by side. I wanna actually kind of stack uh, on top of each other. And then this way we can see like what's that sort of like uh, ratio uh, of those older folks within each uh, job role. I can actually even use that uh, this window calculation to show, uh, show the percent of total. 
So if I select this uh, percent of total, that means each bar becomes 100% for all job roles. Then this makes it easier to compare because now like I can see like a manager has 87%, 87.25%. Uh, those are the older folks, meaning like greater than 40 years old. And then the sales representative has only 10.84% people are greater than uh, older than 40 years old. Okay, so that's the, uh, you can create the condition within a chart. Uh, I think this is the easiest way to quickly create uh, this sort of like logical data, logical meaning a true or false, or like, you know, uh, in this case, true or false, but basically they create two groups and then you can compare either the numbers of those or like a ratio of those, okay. So, so this is one way to do it, but today's really topic is, um, I want to sh show you guys how you can create this type of um, data as a data wrangling step, which means like a right-hand side, so that you don't have to do, you know, this kind of creating condition kind of stuff in every single chart. Because imagine like if you want to keep using this age greater than 40, I had to do in a color and in the second chart. And then the first chart, I had to actually create a condition in the Y axis. And if I want to create like a different chart, then I have to do that again inside a chart. So like every time I create a chart, there's this um, type of repetitive job. Then why don't we create this um, as a data then you can actually use it. So that's the topic. Um, let's go back uh, to the agenda here. <clears throat> to do basically like you want to, you need to know this thing called logical data type. And a logical data type is just pretty simple. Uh, if you happen to be, uh, if you're not familiar with. Um, so here's a summary view. Um, then you see the data type underneath the column name. Okay. And then these are the uh, data type. These are common data types. There are other data types as well, but these are most likely um, uh, you will see any of the, one of these uh, data type in exploratory. So left hand side says a data type in exploratory and a slash R, meaning exploratory was built on top of R. R is a data science programming language, or not just a language, it's more like kind of data science uh, system. And then we build exploratory on top of it. That means we use the data type that are defined and then registered, um, sorry, register in R. Okay, so numeric character, factor, logical, date, comma, project, CT, these are all data types but not that like we define it by exploratory, we actually sort of like respect or like use the ones defined or registered in R. But nonetheless, if you're just exploratory user, never heard of R, don't worry about it. These are the data type you see in exploratory. And the right-hand side, I gave, uh, I listed up the sort of data type and analysis, meaning this is, doesn't have to be exploratory or R or, you know, Python world or, you know, any, it's anything. It's just in more like in the textbook wise, when you go to school, when you learn the data analysis or statistics, these are the uh, sort of like a vocabulary you see. So um, the reason we have this is more like it kind of uh, tells you the characteristics of each sort of like a nature or the uh, type of the data. So numeric, categorical, ordinal, logical uh, data time. Um, but anyway, so this is not that important for today's topic. What if we, we, what we care is this, this one, like logical. Okay, and the logical data type is if you have that and then it looks like this in the summary view. Uh, this one is attrition and it says logical underneath the column name. And then the value is true and false. That means the people who have already quit or left the company is true and otherwise false. And then in a table format, it looks like this. So basically it has true or false. Sometimes it can be missing value or NA, but otherwise has to be true or false, one of these values. So this type of the data is called logical and the basically think of it is more like a question I and mean, the answer to the question of like two values. So this, did, did this employee quit and yes or no? Okay, it has to be yes or no. And then this is more like kind of like the world we live with. We say yes or no, as long as the English word, but in a computer world, we actually take this as a true or false. 
Okay, so uh, if we, you have an yes and no, that means that's more like a character data. But then you can later on, like I can, I'm, I'm going to introduce in a second, but convert it to uh, register as a true or false. Um, I don't know why it's true or false, um, but that that's how the computer <laughs> registers it. Um, so anyway, so that's the logical data. Then. Um, before getting into how you can create that type of data, I want to touch on like when you need it, like when you want it or why you uh, want this, this like sort of like a logical data. Um, so many things in the world is kind of like a uh, dichotomies, right? So it's like a kind of basically logical. Uh, for example, like we watch the movie and most of the movie is always there's a good and bad, maybe like the uh, only the movie I'm watching, um, especially the Hollywood movie. But, uh, uh, you know, or hero and a villain, um, <clears throat> some uh, um, type of things. But not just that, you know, for example, when some customers come to your website and then that customer have converted or sign up or not, right? So that those type of the two uh, answers. And then, or, you know, that you are testing uh, something and then you are accepted or fail or pass the test or fail the test. And the two answers. Um, so, or, you know, like you have like subscription business, you might have the customer who cancel or still using, which means a retain customers, that type of thing. So usually like um, there are this type of like a two answers. And then basically what you wanna do is like, you wanna compare them, which one is higher, which one has more. And then we have something that, that kind of difference, then you can start investigate of why that's happening or how those things are um, different. So that's really the uh, main uh, type of the data analysis. So. We that um, for something like this, we really want to uh, have this logical data type. Okay, and then in exploratory, we have the summary view and then go to the correlation mode by clicking on the correlation button. Then you can select if it's logical data type or numerical data type, you can select it. And what it's going to do is like a, it will investigate um, or do this all the necessary calculations to give you the idea of like how those are relate, uh, sort of like a related. So, um, or what's the, what makes the difference between true and false in the visualized uh, way. Or sim um, if you will, you, uh, you can say more like a correlation with the true and false. Okay. And then if, when you go to analytics, then you can see, <clears throat> You know, something like a T test, which is a hypothesis test, or logistic regression, which is more like um, uh, the you know prediction model, or statistical learning, and a, and or survival analysis. These type of analysis are designed to analyze logical data, which means you need to have the data as a logical data type, meaning a true or false data. Okay, so this is not about a spectrum, you know, like this is not about numerical or continuous values uh, analysis. This is about true and false and what makes those two different uh, type of analysis. And then when you have the logistic regression, then as a uh, for the target variable, it has to be logical data type. Okay. And then another thing is, uh, uh, you know, you might have heard like A-B test, or if you're coming from a science background, you um, are familiar with RCT, randomized control test. So this type of um, test is also, is make it, make sort of like a created two groups and like you compare them to, uh, between them and see, you know, what makes a difference or the, the difference is something that you expected or not. So typical if A-B test is like you have the A version of the website and B version of the website or service or whatever product or whatever that could be. And then you random, randomly select the users or customers or whatever and assign them to A and B. And then you monitor how the engagement or number of clicks or signups or whatever that it's important to you and how those metrics will perform and you see the difference um, uh, types of things. So this is two is that you create two groups. Uh, most of the cases, you don't create three groups or five groups or uh, something like that. You just create two groups and you want to see the difference between them. Okay. So enough about this why, but uh, I think really the point is this logical data type is something that 
um, if you come, if you're new to data analysis or statistics world, and then you sort of like, why do I care? Uh, I, I can go with like a character data type, um, but or even numerical data type, but logical data type is actually uh, very important. And then it's almost like, uh, you know, sometimes like any type of data, you sometimes you want to create the logical data out of it. So that makes it easier to analyze or even visualize that data. Okay. So then the question is how we can create it because it typically like um, your data is not logical from the beginning or like the, by the time that you import the data, you might have the data says yes or no, or one or zero, or just numerical values, or just character and a bunch of um, uh, categories. So you, it's not necessary to have the logical data at the beginning. But like I said, there are many situations that you want to have the logical data. So the question is how you can create, what you want to convert. OK. And then typical way is you can change the data type uh, to logical data. So let me just go quickly in the uh, demo. Here, so I have that uh, employee data, each row is each employee, right? And then there is this attrition columns. Right now, it's, it says yes or no, okay? If I go to the summary view, here's attrition columns still uh, yes or no. And it looks like no is 1,233. These people haven't left the company yet, and 237 people who left the company. Okay, so now like how can we convert this to logical data type? So from the column header menu and the change the data type and underneath the change data type, there is a convert to logical. When I click on it, it will open the create calculation dialog with the uh, function says str underscore logical. This str stands for string. So, um, and then this is logical. So convert the string data or character data to logical. And that's what it is. Um, <clears throat> and then when I click RAM button, it will convert this character data to logical, meaning assign these values with true and false. And what it does is it convert yet yes to true, no to false. Okay. And this works in a similar way with like one zero type of data. One becomes true, zero becomes false. And once in a while somebody said, Well, I want no to be true, yes to be false. I want to just switch that. Well, in that case, in this function, if you type comma. And then there is this attribute or um, this one says true underscore value and true underscore value equal, you can say select the no. And that means no becomes true and yes becomes false. Okay, so you can actually change uh, the default setting. But in this case, I wanna, uh, because I know like yes, um, attribution meaning that the people who left the company, so I'd rather assign other two values. So I'm gonna just click round bottom as is, and then I get this uh, attribution. So now the order is now different, true, false, and then by the true meaning, this one was the one that used to be um, the yes, and then 237 people, and 16.12% of people who uh, left the company in this data set. Okay, so that was uh, super simple, but what if like, it's not like, you know, yes, no, one, zero. What if, for example, like here is a business travel. I have three values and I wanna create a uh, true or false data based on the values. So let's say here's a true rarity and a true frequently and a non-travel. I wanna make the true rarity and a true frequently to be the people who have travel, uh, um, who have done a business travel. And then the force to be that for the people who never travel. Okay, so you can actually do it. And then to do, I wanna introduce one thing here. So something called logical operator. So basically the one we are gonna use is this type of operators. Seems like um, uh, kind of like a calculation-ish, uh, but also the filter operations. And then basically, let's say like if I want to create, you know, uh, the true or false, or like logical, 
then I can use eco eco to just say like, hey, like if country eco Japan, I want to return that as a true and everything else to be false or something. So these are the operators. And one tricky thing is that the, uh, the bottom two that like, is in any of, this is like multiple choice or multiple selections. So not just Japan, but I want to actually say Japan or US, then I want to assign true, otherwise false or something. Okay. So, so to do here, uh, I'm going to create um, that one logical column based on this business travel and the true for this travel rarely and frequent, frequently. To do, I'm going to click on column header menu. And this time, I'm going to go to create calculation with a standard calculation. Okay. And if I select it, then here's a business travel. And then here, if I uh, type space, and then usually um, give me a like a sort of like a suggestion list. If it don't, it doesn't. You can click on tab key. When you hit the tab key, it gives me this type of suggestion. Um, he, underneath, there are a bunch of like a different types of calculation. But you, when you scroll down, like you see here, is like equal equal. And if I select equal equal then it gives me the values of this column, like a business travel. So let's say like I want to say uh, travel frequently to this to be true values. Then in that case, I can click on round bottom. Okay. I'm going to change the, uh, create a new column and then set that. Let's say this is like a, a has travel and then round bottom. And what happened is here, let's go to the table view, might, might be easier to see um, here. So travel rarely becomes false, but travel frequently true, and then uh, non-travel becomes false. Okay, so now I have just created it, created a logical column with the true and false values based on the values of business travel. This time, like I just use the equal, equal, I'm gonna click on token and then open this dialog. Right now, like we have the equal, equal, to, this is one single value. But what if like I want to say like, you know, travel rarely and or frequently, so two values. And in that case, I need to change this one. So I'm going to just remove this. And then instead of selecting equal, equal, I can select percent in percent. And then there's this C, this is like um, kind of for the bracket so that I can um, sort of like uh, assign a couple values. I can have a couple of values here. So travel frequency, frequently, and a comma, and a travel rarely. And now I have two values. And this means if the business travel is in either travel frequently or travel rarely returns true. Okay, so like at this point, like if I'm click round bottom, and then now that like, you see the true for rarity or frequently, and only the one has false is now that non-travel. Okay. So this way that like, you can create this type of conditions. But some people say like, hey, you know what? How can I even remember those uh, 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 operator? Well, like, like you saw, like you see the suggestion. So like you might uh, get that <clears throat> uh, sort of a hint or like you can select one of them. But also though, like whenever you get kind of confused, there's this like a filter dialog. You go to, let's say here's the other step, plus button or column header menu either way. And when you open this uh, filter dialog, and then here, uh, notice this one here under the syntax. This is the basically like, uh, the syntax that you want to use as the logical calculation or conditional calculation. So what that mean? What I did was let's say that here is a business travel. And then the multiple select, right? Is in multiple select. And then like I want to select the travel frequency, travel rarely. Basically, this is the one that like, you needed it. So in a, in this sense, you can actually copy and paste uh, this one, and then go back to the create calculation, and then paste it here as well. So any type of the condition that like, you want to create, but you're not sure how to create it, then it's uh, easier way to do it is to go to the filter dialog. And take a look at the syntax and then use that uh, as a calculation. Because this is kind of crazy, uh, sort of like weird if you're not familiar with this system, because usually you imagine a calculation is something like, 
you know, use a function like let's say, you know, uh, like a sum function or whatever the function, or you multiply or plus and um, that type of mathematical calculation. Here is not really the mathematical calculation, it's a, it's a condition. But um, in exploratory or more precisely in the world of R, you can use condition as a calculation, which re would return true or false. Okay, so that's uh, that. And one thing also, another thing is, let's say uh, that I want to create another column of like um, uh, older people and younger uh, people or something. So from the age column header menu, and then they do the same thing, create calculation and standard. And then like, I can create a condition here. This time, let's say like um, uh, 40, uh, greater than 40 years old, or including the 40 years old, um, then it's basically this is a condition I created inside the chart at the beginning of the seminar, but I can create the, now the column, right? So then uh, create a column name, let's say, what should we call it? Uh, greater than, greater than 40. Then now like I have this column being created. And as you see, that any people who are uh, the age are greater than 40 now have the two values. Okay. So with this way, you can create a column with a calculation or conditional calculation or, or logical calculation um, more precisely. Then you can create this type of data. Now, the cool thing is now like you go to the chart. And then you remember, like I had, uh, um, for example, something like this. Um, I had this color, uh, and I had to create this condition within the color uh, setting. But instead, if I move this pin button, because right now, the other second step didn't have that column I created. It, that I created as a, a last column. Uh, sorry, last step, the step five. So I just moved the step to five, and then at this point, instead of the age. I can assign this is greater than 40, and then it does the same thing, except the color is slightly different, but now it shows a two and fours. And if I want to change the color, then like I can uh, switch that color palette, but basically it's the same thing we are looking at here. Another thing it's cool is um, let's say like I'm going to go to, uh, uh, let's create another chart, very similar thing. And this is a typically uh, with the logical data. I think this is one of the, uh, best way to visualize. So like, let's say like I have again, a uh, job role. And then I want to see like how much of the folks uh, have already left the company. So from Y axis, then I have this attrition column. Then I can select the attrition because attrition column is, you remember we converted it. So this one, right? So it has a two or fours inside the computer. Um, the two is actually one and force is actually zero because the computer is, I mean, uh, is the system is, is all about one zero, right? Any type of thing is always uh, binary one zero. So uh, two is actually one force is zero. So therefore it's easier to calculate. Basically what is happening here is I guess it says 62. And then this one, I assign attribution to force column and it says number of two. That means adding up all those two rows and then give me the uh, values. And it turned out there were 62 people were labeled as true for this attribution column. Okay, and I can, uh, I'm gonna just sort by this one and uh, the y-axis column. <clears throat> so now instead of showing the number of trues, let's say you wanna see like, what's the ratio of the two? So that way you can see sort of like a, a quit rate uh, or attrition rate for each um, job role. So let's say like, I want to know like uh, which among these job roles, which job roles have the highest rate of uh, um, attrition. And then, well, it turned out it's also, it's e easier to do it in a system because system knows the true is one and the other one is zero. And then system also knows how many roles for each job role, right? So I can set, change that to instead of number two, I can select a percent of true. And in this way, I can see like, okay, so it's almost like 40% of the people in the sales representative job role have already left, um, left the company. So this is like a highest rate. And compared to research director at the most uh, right-hand side, 
as only 2.5%. So you can see like which group have more people leaving um, or less people leaving. And then you can change that to, if you are familiar with the statistical uh, world of things, and then you can change that to Eraba. And then like you can maybe like change that to circle. And then you can see, you can compare this uh, rate of attrition by group with the confidence in total and then see like if there's a significant difference or not type of thing. So these are all the things that because we have this logical uh, column, logical data column, so you can do uh, all sorts of um, all sorts of things, um, um, makes it easier to visualize and compare them. Okay. So that's um, visualizing the logical data. And another thing uh, I like to do from here is that, okay, here. Um, we have been creating uh, this con uh, logical data with the calculation, okay? But there's another way to do it. Um, so even though, like I said, hey, you can use a filter dialog, use a syntax, copy and paste, so you know you don't have to remember the, any operator. It's easy enough. But there's also another way. I'm not sure which is easier, which is more simple. I think it's really the, depend um, um, the uh, users. But uh, there's another way I like to introduce quickly here, which is to use the UI uh, completely. So what that means is, I'm going to try to do the same thing here. So let's say here's a business travel. Right, and then we create this, this business uh, has travel column at this step, green highlighted. But instead of using that as a calculation, you can use the UI. So how are you going to do it? So here from the column header menu, and either create calculation with condition or replace values with condition. Either way, it will open the same dialog, which is called a uh, conditional value assignment. And then here, what I can do is create a condition, same things, right? So like what I'm going to do is that if business travel, uh, sorry, the travel rarely or frequently, then, um, oh, let's change that. Like this time, I want to assign that if the travel frequently, then the true, otherwise false. And in order to do it, before creating a condition, like one thing to note is that here's a return value type. Return value is as, as a result of whatever we do here, what are the value and data type you're expecting to be returned? So in this case, we want to return true or false logical data type. So I'm going to select this one to be logical. And what this is going to do, the two things. One is this list, um, uh, drop down list, the values are depending on, are dependent with this selection. So if I select logical, then you see logical and then other column and then calculation stuff. But if I select, for example, new uh, numeric, then you don't see logical uh, instead of uh, I see numeric values. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to select a uh, uh, logical, and then now it is. And another thing it does is when I click on RAM button, it does the validation first and it make sure the return value, whatever the, I do the calculation on this value, to um, uh, to return the true or false. Um, otherwise, you'll get um, some error message. Okay, so now like, let's create a condition, plus bottom, and then business travel is equal to uh, travel frequent frequently. Okay, so this is a condition I created it. And if this matches, then return true. Otherwise, what you want to return. Default is NA, but I'm gonna change it to false. Okay, in this case, then if I click run button, it will return either true or false based on this business travel status and value. Okay, and I'm gonna create a new column as, let's say this is um, uh, travel, travel often, frequently. Okay, and then now that I got this new column called travel frequently, and then only the frequently uh, value return to otherwise or false. Okay, so the cool thing about this using this dialog, I'm gonna open that same dialog again. Okay, uh, there are a couple of things. The, uh, one is another one is that you can 
create multiple con uh, conditions. So I have this travel frequently. And then let's say like, uh, and also out of those people who are the salespeople or something, okay? So because salespeople are known for travel often, so maybe they could be, you know, probably those are those are the guys uh, travel often. I wanna see, so like click on this plus button and then like another condition. And then here I'm gonna select the job role and the operator to be is in because I know like I want to select multiple uh, group in this case sales executive and the sales representative. Again, I don't have to go through like a calculation stuff like I just do it all in the UI. And obviously, like you have the syntax as well. So um, and basically the same thing you need to write as a calculation if you have to. But in this case, you don't. Uh, you I simply click OK that I created this condition. So whoever matches this, these two conditions will become true. Okay. And then click run bottom. And then result might be slightly different. Uh, are there any two people? Oh, here you go. So there's the true. And because this uh, person is travel frequency and true. Wait a second. I thought, uh, oh, here it goes. There's a sales executive be, uh, because of that. Uh, now it's a true. So these two columns uh, contribute whether uh, deciding whether it's true or false. Okay. So that's uh, one. And then another thing is so uh, there are a bunch of other type of um, uh, filter as well. Uh, sorry. Um, uh, condition as well. So uh, I think I have, uh, there you go. The one that we saw, oh, another one is uh, this case. Let's say like um, create another type of a condition. Let's say like, what, what can I do? Uh, maybe let's use the same column and then from uh, uh, replace value and with uh, conditions. And then in order to create a condition, here is uh, so far we have seen like equal to, greater than, uh, multiple uh, values and so on. The other way to do it too, for example, something like a contains, not contains, start with, right? And then if I select contains and then here, like I, I said, like, hey, you know what? Like I want to say uh, it contains F-R-E-Q, freak, then become, you know, uh, return true. And then you, you can actually, be, uh, create a condition with the UI. And in this way, I, th I think this is much better than you know using a create calculation there because then like, you need to know this SDR detect function. Another thing is, for example, if I click on the ignore case or using the regular expression and so on, and you all the thing you can do is in UI, so you don't have to know anything. So that's another advantage of using this conditional uh, value assign UI. Another thing though, uh, I'm gonna just create here and then this is like logical and then true, otherwise uh, false. And then I'm gonna just create it as a calculation one. Okay. At this point though, like I don't have, the, this data doesn't have it, but uh, another advantage is uh, if you happen to have the date type of the information, let's say uh, if I have something here, There you go. So this date type of um, <clears throat> column, then you creating the calculations uh, is a little bit of a conditional calculation is a little bit tough because uh, if I select here and then uh, return date and the operator underneath, these types of things is like a equal to is pretty much the same, but you can use this relative dates. So let's say like uh, you want to return true for the customers who have purchased something in the last three months. Then you can select, uh, for example, months, and then that's last three months, and the type three. And what we did is basically we created this syntax, uh, but you don't have to know anything about that. Like all you need to do is basically use this operator relative dates and then select uh, whatever the parameter values. 
Okay, so this is the advantage of using this uh, conditional, uh, sorry, conditional uh, value assignment UI. You don't have to, if you're uh, familiar with such things, then, or especially you, you wanna create a column with just greater than or equal to kind of stuff. Uh, you might wanna just go to create a calculation, much simpler, you can just type it and that's it. But if you're not familiar with uh, those type of operation or operate, operators of the functions, then you might wanna start with the conditional uh, value assignment UI. Okay. Um, and then once you have that, okay, once you have that, let's go back to um, uh, HR attribution data set. There it goes. So now like I have that attribution uh, logical data on a, a couple other logical uh, um, data type columns. Once you have this, then you know obviously like you can go to the analytics tab and then you know uh, do some analysis there but uh, i think the easiest way or simple way to start with is this click on this correlate button and then underneath i'm going to uh, hide the left hand side and underneath you want to you can select either numerical uh, or logical now that we have attrition as a logical data type so i can select this attrition that uh, column and what it does is basically like a check, um, sort of investigate each car, the relationship between this column, this is, we call it like a target column and uh, any, uh, on all these um, columns. So right now, like what we are looking at here is the age is X axis and the attrition is Y axis. But in this case, the ratio of two, okay? So that means attrition rate um, by the age group and then we can see, okay, so like as the employees age get older, people uh, leave the, this company, less people leave this company. And when the younger people uh, tend to leave more than uh, older folks. So that type of relationship is being kind of created as a chart. And then also like you can see the relationship, how strong that relationship is as AUC, as a metric. Um, if you're not familiar with AUC, the simple word is AUC is between, uh, ranges between 0 0.5 to one. And then uh, closer to the one is like a uh, stronger uh, relationship. And for the details, though, like I have done the seminar before. So uh, I'm not sure, I, I might have not, I, I gotta double check. <laughs> I thought I did, but anyway, um, but, so by looking at this one, it's like it has some sort of a, a relationship here, but I want to know what are the columns among these 28 columns, what are the columns have the strongest relationship with the attrition, meaning which column actually that e, uh, the sort of like uh, useful to separate the attrition true employee and false employee. Okay, so that I can do the sorting based on by using this AUC because that AUC is a metric to indicate the um, uh, coordinated relationship. Okay, so I'm going to uh, select AUC. And then now all the columns being sorted, and then uh, starting from the highest uh, re, uh, sort of a coordinated relationship with attribution or associated relationship with um, attribution. So now here, the job role, what we are looking at here is which job role has the highest attribution and which job role has the lowest attribution rate. And then next one, the total working years, like so attribution rate, how that, that changes as the working years go up and so on. So this is one way uh, to kind of like analyze the data, once you have the logical, uh, the column. Okay, and then from here though, like you can cl click on this chart button to create a, uh, this chart under the chart view or from the column header menu to create other type of the charts like bar chart and line chart and so on, or go to uh, analytics. Another thing is like if uh, I can select, for example, like multiple select by the shift key and then, uh, or control key or uh, uh, the command key for the Mac. And then from the column header menu to create the logistic regression, for example. Then now like you have the logistic regression, target variable is attribution, and then predictor variable are those four columns. Okay. Now then like you can see like what are the importance uh, of those columns, what are the coefficient of those um, uh, variables, what are the uh, relationship, between the attrition and each um, variable and so on as well. Okay, so this is a little bit uh, uh, went too 
uh, far uh, for this uh, particular topic of today, but I, I just wanted to show you the kind of potential, like once you have the column to be um, logical data type. Okay. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, what I have done today is basically I wanted to share with you guys uh, um, how important or useful to have this logical data type and what you can do with the logical data type in terms of visualizing the data, in terms of analyzing the data. And then once you see the benefit or you see the, see the, see the needs, then the next question is how you can prepare or how you can create the logical data. Um, then you can have like a character data type or a numerical data type. Um, you can convert them by one is using a calculation. It's like a with a logical operator or conditional sort of like a, a condition as a calculation. Then another way, the second way is to use the UI, which is assign uh, conditional assign value UI. Then you don't have to think about any operator or the function or anything like that. Or you all you do is use the UI to construct the condition and then assign what can be the true or what can be false. Okay, so uh, that's it for today. And uh, <clears throat> so the past online seminar, uh, you go to exploit.io under the learn and go to the online seminar, and then you can see all the recording in the past seminar. Um, and also the future, uh, we are planning to uh, keep doing the seminar every week. So you can see that uh, what's coming as well. And please don't forget is uh, this, we have been creating the tutorials or notes, uh, instruction notes, and also the uh, video for how to, uh, you can find them under the learn and the how to tutorials or how to video. Okay, with that, um, my information is like email is can at exploited.io or Twitter. Uh, we have the exploratory data uh, where we announce, um, you know, whatever the uh, events and product release and product related information and the seminar related information as well. So please follow. Uh, with that, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining today. And then uh, with this, I'd like to open it up for the Q&A session.